bud man to help all the veterans and make everyone think that they care. Then they gave me the job with a wink and a nod. They told me vets are the goal that we shared. Okay, so my name's Pat Stogren. I, uh, I retired from the Canadian Army in 2007 uh, at the rank of Colonel. Um, after 30 years service, and this is my wonder dog, Apollo. After I left the military, I was looking for something to uh, uh, occupy my time intellectually and uh, because through my military years, I'd always been studying something. So I got into guitar and uh, I'd been diagnosed with uh, post-traumatic stress disorder about 10 years earlier. That is my bike. They lost the gamble, so they had to scramble. They shouldn't take veterans so light. I have to say, the, the most traumatic thing I experienced in my career, like consciously, was uh, my time as ombudsman, seeing the way our veterans were being treated. How did I happen in ombudsman? It, it came completely out of the blue. I had commanded the first troops in Afghanistan on the combat mission in 2002 and, and that was a role that I had aspired to. That was my only kind of military ambition. I didn't come unglued for not being renewed. I expected that for talking so frank. Guess I'll be self-employed. I'll do what I enjoy. There's not much work if you just try the uh, When I left after three years, I was really angry and kind of withdrew into music. I found it hugely therapeutic and started doing open mics and uh, um, said, hey, there's probably a way I can bring the veteran community together here and do some good in terms of some change. And uh, so, you know, the, the idea behind Singing for Change is to, to promote that, uh, the therapeutic value of music. I just told you what I observed, so please. Mr. Minister. I left my heart with the sappers round case on. And I sold my soul with my cigarettes to the black market man. I did the Vietnam cold turkey Cross the ocean to the silver city And it's only other vets who'd understand My first two years after being ombudsman, I was really angry and I'd say very messed up. So when I was the ombudsman with PTSD myself and after three years where I saw, hey, this is, this is just a scam, you know, um, they're dismantling the veteran services and meanwhile they're sending them overseas to be butchered kind of thing. She was lined and I was home to a lucky land. Uh, I became very disillusioned with the uh, fiasco um, that was our efforts in Afghanistan. It was so uh, uh, wrong the way we were doing it and within the Canadian forces I was becoming more and more vocal. But their minds were always closed And their hearts were locked in fast suburban change Singing for change, like to me it's like my whole life is holistic It's impossible for me to talk about veterans without getting into international affairs But the change thing to me is huge Like I've spent most of my life training and changing and developing myself And that's what guitar was all about Music was such a profound kind of awakening for me and to me manifests itself on so many levels right from the government right on down into the heart and the so I came up with this idea of singing for change both in terms of the the metaphor with you know give me some money please but also change in the community and cha change personally and um, the uh, the kind of moniker that I applied to it under singing for change is be the change you want to see and that's Gandhi's saying. Going nowhere and I'm in a hurry. You know, the last plane out of Sydney's almost gone. Like, 
like I've been a friend of Pat's for a while, and so I went downtown to Ottawa to see the first Singing for Change event, and this is just a small community of people. Like, this is 1,500 people in this community, and we get a turnout like this. Well, this, this is Pat's idea. He's the one who started it. I've been in two war zones in my life. I've been shot at directly by snipers, shelled, uh, spit on, urinated on, uh, and detained forcibly, had knives pulled on me, and nothing is more fucking scary than standing in front of people singing. You know, the last plane out of Sydney's almost gone. This is magic, and what, what's especially exciting is that, look, we're bringing people together. These are Canadians. Everybody in this room cares. You know, cares enough that we don't, in a way that we don't see at higher levels. What you see veterans doing now, taking the government to court and winning, is what all Canadians should be wary of as this aging demographic starts to really test the, the resiliency of our, uh, and that's my whole, this singing for change thing actually comes out of the rebel guerrilla, which is at the bottom of that, and... Uh, I'm actually applying revolutionary warfare, replacing uh, violence with entertainment and music with a view of getting the message out, so, which is why I have these shitty little leaflets. And uh, so this is kind of uh, covert operations, if you will. Anyways, but that's an issue for when I launch my coup in two years. And then there's Don Martin, who wrote in a column, said disabled vets are infernal. And then for good pleasure, he had the measure of calling me a crusty old colonel. He's a government crony, he's full of baloney, only known because he writes for a journal. To me that's no hassle, cause I'll picture that asshole every time I'm in front of a urinal. So please... Use my public persona to help these people that are doing such massive service for our country. But they do it in relative obscurity of the communities. Atta boy, lie down. You're staying with me, Pop. I wish you good luck when I'm gone, but I didn't do anything wrong, so please. Mr. Minister, bite me. And that's it.